we were asked some months ago to uh, do a video on the Ludritz Basin offshore Namibia. It's taken us a while, but today we've got round to it. There's some exciting stuff in here. I hope you enjoy. Where and what is it? This is the location of the basin offshore Namibia. So we see on the map here the Ludritz Basin is sandwiched between the Wolvers Basin to the north and the Orange Basin to the south. This old feature here, the Damara Belt, it actually sets up this plunging nose here, the Ludritz Arch, and um, also this small basin here, the, the Swakop Basin, and indeed the Wolvers Reentrant. So if we have a look at a, a north, northwest, a south southeast cross section, you can see we go from the Walvis Basin into the Ludritz Basin and then on into the Orange Basin. And we can see here the, the sort of the ages of the sediments within there. But actually drawing the, the boundary between the, the Walvis and the, the Ludritz, uh, it looks like this arch here is, is a pronounced feature. Not quite uh, as obvious uh, to the south of the basin, but it's the region of the, the Kudu gas field, this, this Kudu arch, a local high here, that separates away from, from the Orange Basin. Of course, the Orange Basin in 2022 had the Graf and Venus discoveries that have really generated an awful lot of interest in uh, offshore Namibia. On this map here from Eco Atlantic, not entirely clear where the, uh, the Ludritz arch is, but we can certainly see that you know, uh, this is uh, a similar interpretation. Like the other offshore basins on the Namibian passive margin, the Ludritz Basin formed during the opening of the Atlantic Ocean in the late Jurassic to early Cretaceous. The sediments are mainly thick, shallow marine to deltaic sandstones deposited in the upper and lower Cretaceous, overlying continental clastics and volcanics. The Ludritz Basin displays a thin late Cretaceous section, but the tertiary developed rapidly, accumulating a thick clastic section, laterally offset from the present-day mouth of the Orange River. Here on this uh, Top Aptian depth map, we can see the expression of the Ludritz Basin here as this feature, and likewise we can see the, uh, the Orange Basin to the south. So the extent of the basin is shown highlighted in this region here. On this map, well, the basin actually corresponds to a region of, like this. And what we see from study is the Cabaldu, the Moosehead, and certainly the Kudu gas field are always assigned to the Orange Basin. We'll come back and show the uh, the Shark One, but it has greater affinities to Walvis Basin than it does to the Ludritz. So that leaves us with one deep well and one ODP well within the Ludritz Basin. Now, this is a, a licensed map. It's around about 2020, so it's a little bit out of date. But uh, here, the, the authors of this have, have actually put on what they believe to be the extent of the Ludritz subbasin, it's called on this map. We want to look at uh, the size of the basin. And this is the block that was formerly licensed to uh, Serica Energy. And they did some great work. And here you can see that to uh, highlight this region here, in, uh, or overlay it on the, the Gulf of Mexico, or overlay it on the uh, Central North Sea, and we can see uh, the sort of the scale we're talking about. If we look at the entirety of the Ludritz Basin, it really makes up a significant part of the, uh, of the offshore Gulf of Mexico region, and indeed a significant part of the uh, Central and Northern North Sea regions. So looking at the basins, you can see on these sections, they do differ from, from north to south. There are thicker um, uh, Cretaceous sections here, but the, the tertiary is, is very, very thick in all of these basins. But in particular in the Ludritz, it looks like there's a, a more intense gravity collapse uh, within, this, uh, within this basin. So potential for very late and, and recent generation uh, of hydrocarbons. Due to there only being one well, there is uh, very limited information on the lithophases. There are no wells on the slope or in the deep marine. So there's no proof of uh, lithophases such as source and reservoir and seal in those parts of the basin. But we can, um, we can have a go at predicting the lithophases and it suggests that all of those components uh, should be present. Here's the one well we've talked about, the 251381, and this is the entry from Trove showing all the information that we have on that particular well. And here's the ODP well that was shown in the basin. Uh, we've got lots of information on that, but this seismic line here shows that the ODP well actually it didn't penetrate very far into the sediment pile. In fact, it TD'd in the, uh, the early Pliocene. This is the deep well. It's projected onto this seismic line. 
you can see we've, we've just highlighted here a sort of an interesting looking geometry. Uh, we're not sure what uh, age that is, but it looks like we do have something that's uh, that's absolutely that's pinching out a significant distance up dip of the uh, the well that was drilled. And if we look at the well results here, you know, we can see here's top Cretaceous, top Cenomanian and the mid Aptian reflectors that uh, have been mapped. So there's no shortage of seals or reservoirs, but the well actually um, went and penetrated uh, sort of Aptian aged uh, volcanoclastics. Now within the uh, the greater region this would be the model for the basin where we've got no worries about seals or for that matter reservoirs if we can find them in the right place. But in terms of source rocks there's potential for pre-rift and synrift source rocks. We know that we have the Aptian restricted marine shales and the anticipation is that prior to the separation of the Falkland Plateau as it cleared the southern tip of Africa, there probably was an anoxic conditions to uh, to actually deposit source rocks before the uh, the fully oxic global circulation got established. And then in the um, the mid Cretaceous oceanic anoxic event, uh, we know we anticipate there would be a good development of Cenomanian Turonian marine shales. So you know, highly likely that there are good source rocks developed within the Ludrits. This is our entry on the, uh, on the geochemistry for Namibia. And we've got lots of material here, all compiled. And, th and that's only just a part of it that we're showing in there within Trove. So uh, north of the basin well, well, we showed it on the map, the Shark 1 well, 231551. And this is the entry we have in Trove for that particular well. And uh, here's the location of it. And really, it sort of lies to the north of the Ludritz Arch. And uh, it's got more affinities with the Walvis Basin or, even, or indeed the, the outer Swakop Basin rather than uh, the Ludritz. So a north-south uh, seismic line approximately in this location here. And we can see that the, uh, the, the Cretaceous very thick and well developed within the orange basin thins over the kudu arch but within the ludritz basin oh, we have a good thickness of, of, of cretaceous sediment the tertiary well essentially there's just a continuum and it's really difficult to sort of see what the basin split would be between the, the ludritz and the orange uh, in tertiary times uh, if we look at the dip line running from west to east and round about this location here uh, this is what it looks like and again there's the the only deep well We've highlighted that, that feature that was pointed out earlier, this uh, significantly up dip of the well. We can also see these brights in here, and we could have actually highlighted quite a lot of more brights and indeed features such as this, and some of these in here, but these are in very shallow. Uh, here we're seeing these uh, bottom simulating reflectors probably indicate um, gas hydrates in the shallow section. They may be of uh, biogenic, uh, rather than therm thermogenic uh, origin. So if you look at the license, this was uh, the map on the left from a few years ago, highlighting some of the operators. Map on the right is uh, the most recent map, um, 1st of June 2022. And if we overlay the, the outline of the licenses on the left with the uh, the right, uh, we can see that there is uh, there's quite a good churn of acreage. There's been some relinquished blocks some of them been relicensed. Uh, these are the ones, the coloured ones, are the ones that have been uh, licensed recently. And the the hatchet blocks here, these are blocks that are under negotiation with the the Namibian regulator uh, to actually um, come up with a, a license award. So a good acreage churn and lots of interest and activity in offshore. So the Walvis Basin. Quick look at that. Here are all the licenses in this region. These are the major operators just highlighted here uh, to make it easy to see where all the companies are. And uh, lots of acreage here uh, that is, uh, is basically under review, under consideration with applications in, in progress. So uh, this would be the region here. This, this is where the Ludritz Basin would start. So these are the licenses to the north. In terms of deep well count, we've talked about the Ludritz only having one deep well. Well, if you look at the Walvis Basin, it probably has got somewhere between 7 and 11, depending on if you count in some of the DSDP, ODP and uh, coastal wells. But uh, you can see, uh, you know, 1, 10, whereas in the Gulf of Mexico and uh, North Sea over an equivalent area, 
you'd be talking about hundreds, if not thousands of wells across that region. So orders of magnitude difference in the maturity of the exploration and development of these basins. So um, maybe we'll do a follow-up uh, video on the Walvis. From um, Serica Energy's work, we can see here some, some great interpretations of the plays. Here's these uh, submarine fans, uh, basin floor fans, and uh, here they are on a, on a seismic, interesting, very interesting looking features. Likewise, uh, in the chariot block area, you know, we see some of these um, canyon head channels, and again, lots of uh, seismic anomalies in the section. And within Serica's own block, they show quite a lot of prospectivity, including a, a carbonate platform play and the aeolian play, which is, of course, the reservoir in the Kudu gas field. We can see here how, um, you know, understanding evolved. So these two presentations, uh, one in February 2014, another in uh, December 2014. And, and we can see that uh, in here, the batholith was favoured, but a few months later, that was actually dismissed from that process. And, uh, and, and this is the interpretation. So this is one of the useful things about Trove is we can actually look and, and see how um, prospect evaluation evolved over time and uh, how companies views uh, change with increasing understanding so uh, this is uh, indeed this is the trove entry just for this former uh, Serica energy block and you can see there's masses of material um, that's available uh, with with maps and lines and, and write-ups and, and technical justifications so there's a lot to see there so to summarize, uh, there are many basins in Southern Africa, though a lot of them are underexplored, but the Ludritz Basin may well get the first prize for being the least explored basin of them all. We think a, a working petroleum system is highly likely, and, and the, the, the major task is to identify and de-risk the prospects for drilling. More license awards are currently under negotiation. There's lots of activity, and we're going to see uh, increasing amounts of drilling activity later in 2022 and beyond. More wells are most definitely needed, and they need to test different play types to really understand what the potential is up and down the Namibian uh, coastal basins. Is there any reason why the successes in the Orange Basin can't be repeated in the Ludritz? Well, Leave your comments below. Let us know what you think. Um, are you convinced with some of the material that we've shown today? Here's a bonus for those who've stayed to the end. We're going to have a look at the uh, 2022 wells, those that have drilled, those that are drilling or are pending, uh, due to be spudded or drill soon. And the couple, we're not entirely sure where they're, where they're up to. So um, we'll start with uh, Shell in the graph discovery. Well, they've already um, well into drilling of the La Rona well, which is in part a, an appraisal of the graph discovery, but we also think that it's got some expiration targets uh, in that well as well. So we'll uh, await announcements on it and uh, wish Shell every success. We expect that there's going to be follow-up appraisal wells into the third and fourth quarter of 2022 on the uh, the graph discovery. And likewise for Total Energies later in the year, uh, there is going to be a round of appraisal drilling. We expect that the first well will actually spud in uh, August of this year. So Gazania, well, that's going to be in the third quarter. That's Eco Atlantic. It's actually down in South Africa, but it's just the extension here of the Orange Basin. So um, very interesting well, which we'll be covering in follow-up videos. Makandina 8.2 has spudded. Uh, this is Recon Africa, drilling onshore here in the Kavango Basin. It's actually not very far away from the uh, the Kawi 6.2 well, which um, had a, a, a lot of shows in it. There are going to be three other wells uh, in this region. So we'll wait and see what the results of that are. We don't know the status of these two wells. Uh, Global were talking about the uh, well Wichia Deep well, as the previous well Wichia well stopped in the Upper Cretaceous. But now they seem to be favouring the Marula uh, prospect. We'll see something more in a second. Osprey, that was a prospect that, uh, as an AM, were certainly promoting and talking about drilling sh imminently. We're not entirely sure where, uh, what Eco Atlantic's plans are uh, for drilling in the, the Walvis Basin just now. Another piece of news that we picked up on is some of the industry press are speculating that Impact Oil and Gas are looking to divest their 20% stake in the Venus block. Valuations of 
of anywhere between $500 million and a $1 billion are being bandied around. Um, we'll update uh, all of this information in upcoming Trove News videos. This is the Macandina into much older sediments here. This is into the Karoo age sediments. And it shows you this is the Kawa 6-2 here. So it's a deeper play, more into the basin. We'll be following the results of that. And thanks to, to Jamie Vanells for posting this. Uh, likewise, uh, Paul Howlett, just yesterday, he put out this map here. They're showing that uh, Marula seems to be the prospect that they're most interested in here with uh, what's believed to be these these uh, surface oil seeps uh, above it, nearby. But there's the uh, well which you want a well, and, and this is the uh, the deep prospect. And, and it is um, certainly a lot bigger than uh, Marula, but uh, we'll see what the, the plans are as we go forward. A few shout outs. Uh, thank you to Reginaldo uh, Joseph, uh, an MSc dissertation here done at the uh, University of Namibia at Windhoek. And what a great piece of work that is. Just a lovely summary that, that we found very useful for putting this video together. Great work from Serica Energy and, of course, from Namcor and others. Um, Trove News, it's free to everybody. Uh, we haven't made a cent, and yet we've done over 50 videos covering all different parts of the world. But it would really be helpful to us if you would support our channel. And to do that, if you could subscribe, it's totally free. It only takes a second. If you hit the thumbs up button and like the video, we get the feedback that these are of value and people enjoy watching them. Please add a comment below. Let us know your thoughts. What would you like to see the next video on? If you ring the bell, then you'll get informed when a new video comes out, which is always useful. And then uh, share the link with your colleagues, your work colleagues, and even, uh, even your friends. And get everybody looking and understanding what's going on in some of the most exciting basins in the world. We hope that um, there's lots of good information in here that's going to give you a, a, a feel for some of these basins. Thanks very much and look forward to seeing you back here before too long. Bye for now.